How Oil's Rigged Against Africa Nigeria is Africa's biggest oil producer. But unlike other oil-rich countries, it remains relatively poor. One of the biggest reasons is its lack of processing facilities as a result. It has to sell its unrefined oil to other nations who refine it and then sell it back at several times the price. In this clip, Zimbabwean entrepreneur and author Joshua Maponga runs through how foreign firms have been allowed to exploit Nigeria's oil for decades at the expense of local interests. According to him, there's only one solution. Governments need to wake up and take back control of their countries are. Western nations have long blamed Nigeria's oil problems on its fuel subsidies, which were recently scrapped, however. The result was an instant 175% increase in pump prices for its citizens, hardly a way of lifting its population out of poverty, 40% of whom live on the less than two United States dollars AD. Maponga seems to be talking sense. Just run the oil industry as a proper business, which means refining the black gold yourself. To simplistic, give us your thoughts. And it may never benefit you. That's why the oil pipes of Nigeria are passing through villages where poverty is worst. British Petroleum in Nigeria has to import back its own fuel as a processed product at a price three to four, five times more than they send it out of the country. So tell me, Nigeria, after 60 years of mining oil, why up to date you don't have a processing and a refinery to purify your oil and sell petrol to the world? No, those mines don't belong to us. The government signed a document with the British government and it's in the constitution. It's in the law that Britain will mine this place for the next 99 years. I don't know how long is the list. So you have the same law that you vote leaders into. <laughs> and when they get into this law, the Western world always makes sure, always makes sure the person going onto that chair understands the law which protects us. So the revolutionaries that are coming in now seem to have poor knowledge of law. They seem to have a good understanding of the community. It might end up causing Africa to move into a space of anarchy, lawlessness, but even that law itself is foreign to us. And until African leaders understand that now is time not to be talking politics, it's time to be talking economics. If I could give an advice to every African leader before you leave parliament, build industries, build transport infrastructures, own buses as government, own manufacturing companies as government, own railway lines as government, create these parastatals, these non-government organizations, but that are directly funded by the government because the government is the only one who has money. You cannot wait for the bank. The bank wants sureties and the poor people on the ground have poor land. They cannot use that as surety. So the only surety we have is the government itself. So the Chinese business, all the things that you see coming out of China are sponsored by the government of China. How many trillions are they making now? They're a superpower of manufacturing. It takes a government to have a direct intention. And again, if you look into the constitution, the government must not be seen to be doing any business. Your job is that of regulations. You must not be tampering with business. And who is tampering with the business? The same multinational companies. They don't even want you as government to come closer to where the money is made. You sit there and write the rules. And when you don't like the rules, we bribe your parliamentarians to come and vote the wrong thing in parliament and it will be passed while you are sitting there. You are always in power, but not in control.